Belgium coming through or of Turkey. So it's going to be an intriguing race as we settle down for the penultimate race here. wobbles in the start line there. It's often a very long, long hold time now on a, on a cross-country start line, but he, I, I doubt they would have false started. So here we again for the, for, again we see this mad rush for this first right-hand turn and everyone trying to get themselves into pole position and give themselves the best run at this first lap. Interesting to see Julian Vanders really set his stall out there, you know, against he, he is an accomplished runner, but he, that, that was kind of a 1500 meter track speed there going into that first corner. Well, if anything, this is the most aggressive of all the stars. Umay is just behind him. Aras Kaya in there in shot as well, well up there. And you can see Philip Ingebrigtsen is he's, he's close enough, but he's just letting the race sort of pan out, and that's the sort of choice you make. Do you, do you fight hell for leather to get to that first corner and, and risk you know, knacking yourself out, uh, exhausting yourself before it's even started? <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, not that Julian Vanders would have done that. Some very accomplished runners have gone with him there, and uh, like I was hoping, we're going to see a real sort of hard run race here. Well, Wonders has just got a tremendous range on the road. So, I mean, he at one time was the uh, uh, European half marathon record holder. That's since been beaten. But he's also currently under the new rules and regulations. The world 5K record holder, which has obviously come into being in, re in the last 18 months since that, got ratified as a distance. Now, it's a little bit strange just simply because there's so many people who run faster on the track. Nevertheless, he's the current world record holder at 5K on the roads. He's a bit of a statistician's nightmare, Phil, because he's, he's also... The <coughs> Here he's donning a Swiss vest. He's always donned a Swiss vest. There's Tom Neth that we talked about. He's quite a long way back at the moment, but he has been running very well in the cross country. So this just this first 620 meters. It's Umais, Aras Kaya, Wanders, Ali Kaya, Kripa, and Sibatu. I thought we had an interesting conversation with Julian Vanders yesterday at the press conference. Uh, so saying, you know, you're, the, you're an established road runner. This is not a road. This is a this is a very specialist cross country course. How do you think you're going to handle it? Um, and he very confidently thought he'd be fine, and, and quite rightly um, referred to his training venue. He, he trains in Iten in Kenya, which, is, as he quite rightly pointed out, is very hilly. Uh, so he said it, the routes that he runs there in Kenya, there's a there's a forest that's notoriously hilly where you do really hard reps. So he said he's he's more than ready for this this terrain. And this sort of undulation. Just looking there, a couple of the more featured runners back in the 30s. Fernando Caro, last summer's fastest European steeplechaser, broke the Spanish record and 8:05 when he finished. Uh, he finished about fourth in Monaco, but an 8:05 steeplechase made him the fastest European over the barriers. Napoleon Solomon, well, I mentioned him. He's a long way back at the moment. But the other Swede up there is. Adamon Abraha, Turkey at the moment, just leading the way at this very early stages, just over a kilometre. This is, this is interesting for me. You've got you've got sort of Butchar, Ingebrigtsen, uh, and Kameli. All, all they're not really on it. They, uh, you know, whether that's an indication of really how how hard and fast this is, or whether they think this is 10k, I'm going to feel my way into it. I don't really know. But you know, if you're a real intent to, to meddle in this race, as you can see, you've got Kripper and uh, and the other guys really up there. Yeah, not letting, not letting uh, Vanders out of their sight. Well, there's the older brother of Yamani Bahan Kripa, next I get, former world junior mountain running champion. Uh, nice to touch on uh, Vanders' involvement in the breaking two uh, 
project with uh, Elliot Kipchoge and he's a pacemaker there and you kind of think uh, you know, there he is again at the front sort of pushing it on and if you can if you can carry someone like Kipchoge to a sub two, two marathon you're probably not too intimidated about uh, leading the European cross country championships so we've still got Julian Bondus leading the way in this race running very hard at the moment is Rebel Fischer of Sweden 3-1-1 as we look at the back and Aras Kaya up there alongside him, Ali Kaya, the two Turks. See the young, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, um, Amazi, the young young Spanish guy that's uh, totally skipped the under-23 age group, um, got himself right up there. That's that's really incredible to see. And we were sort of speculating, this, is this the Spanish team setting themselves um, out there to try and get a team medal, uh, having one of their best guys jump up into the under-23 age group. But he certainly looks like he's handling it very well at the moment. And also up there in the top 10, Antonio Abadia, the former European under-23 steeplechase champion, now very much confirmed 10,000-metre roadrunner. So there we see the whole field strung out behind them, nearly 100 men in this senior men's race. Not quite a record field, but any time there's this sort of field, it's a good quality, good quality field right the way through. But it still wanders, and then everybody in single file behind him. Fischer, the two Kayas, Aras Kaya, the taller of the two, followed by Yamani behind Creeper. And it looks as though it's last year's under-23 silver medalist from Germany up in sixth place, Samuel Fitwin. He's in sixth place at the moment. And then Abadia, Umais, uh, I think that's Sufian Bucicci who's up there, the better of the two Bucicci brothers. Looks, it looks to me like Inga Brixton is making a, a slight move to try and try and bridge that gap. He's got his, he's got his head up, he's looking forward. Um, you know, perhaps, I don't know, it could be a tactic, he could be internally pacing himself to, to what he thinks is his best effort. But uh, to me, it looks like a bit of a bit of an attempt to bridge that gap. It'll be interesting to see if he takes the like, likes of Andrew Butcher up with him. Punching up there, that was that was strung out a minute ago. Whether that's the, the downhill allowing some of these guys at the back to catch up, but that's a that's a big group there running around together. That should be really competitive. And I yeah, wonder when we start when we'll start seeing the cracks appear. That's the interesting thing. You kind of wonder whether it's going to be the uphills or the downhills. Two laps, three laps, four laps. When are they, when are they going to start struggling? Well, it looks as though the Norwegians are now starting to move up slightly. From a few moments ago, wonders. Fischer and Aras Kaya. At a distance, you can tell between the two Turks. Aras Kaya, the taller of the two in the leading group at the moment. There's Carlos Mayo. And alongside him, Isaac Camilli. Camilli and Mayo ha had several great battles in the under 23 ranks going back a couple of years. I thought Vanders was going to relinquish his lead there for a minute, but uh, but no, he uh, really wants to stand for his authority on this race. and you know, Perhaps giving the other guys a chance to stretch their legs and see see how much they've got and play that tactical game. But he, to, to me, at the moment, Vanders looks very in control of this field. It's indeed. Well, they're calling Samuel Fitway Sabatu. I think he puts Sabatu, but he's well known as the German as uh, Samuel Fitway. There we go. Ben Connor up there leading the, yeah. in, in about uh, tenth or eleventh place at the moment. Yeah, so. I just I just would like to see Camelli and Ingebrigtsen and, and Ben Connor and Andrew Butchart bridge British gap. Mate, it's a bigger group at the front. You know, we want we want all the contenders in there fighting it out. And I think uh, just one of those guys can try and bridge that gap and, and bring that second group back into the mix. So at the moment, well, there's nine men in that leading group, and then. We have Ben Connor in 10th place at the moment from Great Britain. Turkey and Spain currently neck and neck in the team standings after 2,625 metres. But just remember, this is a race just over 10 kilometres in distance. And a lot can change. And as we were saying earlier, it's probably one of the more uh, open races in many respects. Yeah, we saw Andrew Butch up there back in about 15th position. 
He's just moved up a little bit alongside Philipp Ingebrigtsen. We've got 20 cameras on the course, thanks to the Portuguese host broadcasters. And this is nice overhead shot, having a bit of fun with one of the drones here. I think they might have taken a bit of time getting it working, but now we've got the drone above us for the senior races. Well, it's now Aris Kaya just moving into the front with Robel Fischer of Sweden. Slight surprise to see Fischer up there. He showed in the early parts of last year's race and then drifted a long, long way back. Here we go. I've, I've, I've got my wish. <laughs> I've got uh, <laughs> Ben Connor and uh, Philip Ingebrigtsen and Andrew Butchart and those guys kind of getting on the back of this group. It is beginning to stretch out. It's not so much of a, a concentrated clump at the at front, but um, I like this. It's, it's exciting to see a few more of those guys in contact. And Kripper's just quietly following all the moves. He's not making any of his own moves. He seems to be sort of absorbing and, and following these moves quite comfortably. Slightly resident of Jimmy Gressier, the under 23 man, who just sort of bided his time and stuck in there. Uh, you know, but I think Kripper just looks, looks pretty quietly comfortable there. Um, yeah, just wait, wait for a big move, see when it happens. Inga Brisson just doesn't look completely comfortable, does he? Doesn't look that happy. I know we've got a long way in this race to go. We've still got the best part of 18, 19 minutes of running still to go. But he looks as though he's just struggling a little bit. I would have expected him to be up there. Kimeli looks confident and comfortable, even though he is a little way off the leaders at the moment. Well, perhaps the mixed relay saw the, the break of the... Uh... Um, reigning champion, the defending champion reign. Uh, yeah, we saw Spain lead, losing that, and perhaps we'll see the same with Philippe Ingebrigtsen. Well, Yamani Bahar and Kripo just moving up alongside onto the shoulder of Aris Kaya. Well, when Kaya won in 2016, we were in the Sardinian island of Chia. Now, it wasn't as undulating as this, it certainly wasn't as hilly as this, but it was a very similar sort of parkland course, and it was a similar sort of surface underfoot. Well, the interesting thing with the Turkish athletes, as Mark touched on, they don't they don't tend to compete so much all year round. They really we've seen them really focus in on this European Championships, which um, doesn't give us much information ahead of time. And sometimes they can be unpredictable, but sometimes they really come out and, and show their class. And yeah, Kaya is doing a good job of that now. His namesake Ali Kaya, the 2015 champion, just starting to drift back a little bit at this point, though. But the leaders are Aris Kaya of Turkey, head tip of the arrowhead there with on the left hand side of your screen and to Aris Kaya's right Yamani Bahan Kripa as you see one of the athletes there it's the end of the race for this chap from couldn't quite make out where it, not a necessarily a familiar vest but here we are back at the head of the race there and Rob El Fischer the Swede Doing very well at this stage. Ben Connor just moved up a couple of places. Antonio Abadia slipped back a few. Philippe Pingabritsen at the moment in 13th place. And Napoleon Solomon, who went through the first kilometre well back in the 30s, has gradually moved up. He's done very well indeed. He's about fourth place at the moment. Fernando Caro not really showing at this stage. Back in 25th place. Name to pick out. But it's Robel Fischer now working very hard up this hill. Aris Kaya, Yamani Bahan, Kripa, all up there at this stage. See um, Andrew Butchart making a, an effort to get on the back of that group as well. It was good to see Ben really make a sort of positive move and Camelli back, in, back into that group. Ben Connor, sorry. And it's uh, great to see two Belgium athletes as well up there. You've got two. Am I, as, with Ali Kaya dropping, dropping back, it's now Belgium, the only nation with, the, with two people in that top group. I think it's the other Belgian up there is Sofiane Bucici. Yes, it is Bucicci. He's up there. Fitway still battling away there in that group of four, just away from the leading group. So at the moment, it's still Aris Kaya, Yamani Bahan Kripa, and Robel Fischer. They're the men in first, second, and third place. Sofia Bucicci, Julian Bonders, fourth and fifth at the moment for Belgium and Switzerland. And then coming through very well, Bouchart in sixth place. Isaac Camelli in seventh, just moving up very quickly there. Uh, it's what Kimeli actually in eighth place, and then Ben Connor having an extremely good run 
took Team Gold, part of the British team that won back in 2016 when we were in Chia. He's done all sorts of things in his athletics career. He went to the World Championships for the 5,000 metres, paced the London Marathon earlier this year. Third in the European Cup 10,000 metres. So he's had a solid summer on the track as Ben Connor, and he's obviously transferred that form to the to the winter. So there you can see the drone shot, overhead shot. Well, the first six runners now starting to put a bit of daylight, about a five or six metre gap back to Kimeli. Butchart and Fitway. It's interesting to see Camelli almost yo-yoing a bit. One minute, one minute he's back up with those leaders, and then and the next minute he's going back, and it's hard to tell whether that surge is off the front or whether he's going through bad patches. And Butchart seems to be running a very sort of uh, even, evenly paced race, perhaps, or evenly pacing his effort, and, and really committing to getting onto that really front group there. As the uh, the three behind him are struggling, struggling to keep their contact. Yes, the three behind Fitway, Camelli. And Ben Connor, but the leading six. Harris Kai now back in front. Nobel Fischer of Sweden. Slight surprise to see him up there. We weren't thinking about him as a possible medal contender. Julian Wonders of Switzerland. Germani Bahan, Kripper of Italy. And then Sofian Bucicci with Andrew Butchert of Great Britain. Northern Ireland leading the way. Well, Fitway suddenly closed the gap in that. Just as we were switching camera shots, Fitway suddenly has made a a big effort to get on the back and he's challenging Butchart now back sixth and seventh place. It was his, his downhill section. Some people, some people it slows them down, other people they just they just whiz down it and they can really close up some gaps. It looks like Fitway is very comfortable on that downhill. But they haven't been hurtling around this course. No, in fact, the last lap was slower than the previous lap, 4.29. And I was looking to see if Ingebrigtsen was still there. He is. Umais, the highly heralded Spaniard, drifting back a little bit. He's back in about 20th place at the moment. Just saw Fernando Caro going through shot. There's the other of the Bucici brothers, one of the Portuguese athletes. That's Barbosa. Well, his race has come to an end. So let's look at Fasai. He, he was the first European finisher at the World Cross. And I, I made this comparison earlier in the programme between this course and the course in our house and the, the real short, sharp uphills and downhills and how you cope with that. So perhaps his, his finish as the first European athlete in the World Cross uh, earlier in the year is perhaps could have been an indication he was going to perform like this and a you know, particularly fast half marathon PB as well. He has got the calibre to run with these guys and um, just perhaps haven't seen him at the European Cross Country Championships so much. We saw there as we were scrolling through the leading results, Ali Kaya now after showing well over the first three or four kilometres now starting to drift rather dramatically backwards in about 20th position at the moment, the 2015 European champion. That's perhaps the element of the, the Turkish team here. We never, never quite know. They can, they can have absolutely tremendous performances and run away with the field. And uh, just adds to the intrigue of the day, really. We never quite know which Kai is going to show up. Whether <laughs> in this case, though, it's Aris Kai, and he's definitely shown up. Now starting to lap some of the athletes from unheralded nations. But Chart there seems very intent on, on not left, letting the gaps open up. And you can see there's a bit of a gap from the first two back to Vanders that, uh, again, Kripper looked like he was... He was really sort of actively trying to cover. This is the point now in the race we're going to see some of these gaps open up. And there's Philip and in, in, Ingebrigtsen. A bit of a commendable effort. You know, he's, he's, he's still working hard, even though he might might not be on course to defend his title. Tenth place at the moment. We haven't talked about him at all. Jonas Reist. But he was the uh, World Student Games champion earlier this year, over 5,000 metres. So very useful runner at this stage. Switzerland, well, they're a bit of a long way back in the team standings, but they've got two men in the top ten at the moment. But it's Ali Ka Aris Kaya. Aris Kaya up the front at the moment. Still working hard. All the gaps being covered by Robel Fischer of Sweden. With Imani Bahar and Kripa having run what I think is a tactically very astute race. And he's just moving up. He's in third place at the moment. But all three men looking still very full of running with probably just under 10 minutes of this race still to go. So just over three kilometres. Kripa's incredibly experienced at European cross-country. You know, he's not, he's not going to be 
oh, that's, that's a shame to see our, our young Spanish Ooh, athlete nice. there drop yes, out. Yes, another yeah. one just dropping out. That seems to be the place where they fall by the wayside. There was Barbosa of Italy. Uh, Portugal still contemplating what had happened. Meanwhile, the race goes on. <laughs> Surprising there, isn't it, to see Vandas look looked, uh, kind of <laughs> invincible in the first few laps. So he's really sort of coming under a test here. And uh, yeah, again, this is this is the beauty of cross country. It's, it's unpredictable. You don't know who's who's going to suit the course and who's going to suit it on the day. And Camelli still battling hard with Ben Connor there, all in the top ten. It's all, all really great performances, and we're starting to see these gaps open up and perhaps perhaps show us what the finishing order might be. And another Spaniard has housed to... That's going to affect the Spanish possibilities of a team medal. Has housed, well, he wasn't having the best of his days. Came here as one of the perhaps less heralded of the Spaniards, really having his, I think it's second European Cross Country Championships outing. But nevertheless, at the front, the racing is still fierce and furious. Aras Kaya, well, Romeo Fischer is having the race of his life at the moment. Fischer, well, he was the first European finisher, as you were rightly saying a little bit earlier, in Aarhus, but we hadn't really considered him as a strong medal contender here. He hadn't had a great track season by any stretch of the imagination. Although he's come back and had that good win at the Ladingo, very long 30 kilometer cross country race, which is a famous race, mass participation race. They have tens of thousands in that. So as we scroll down, there's the top 10. Not too many changes over the course of the last kilometer or two, but it's still Aris Kaya in front, Robel Fischer. That's one and two for Turkey and Sweden. Then about another 10 metres back to Yamani Baha and Kripa. Still very much in the mix there, Julian Bonders and Sofian Bucici. There's Bucici's younger brother. I've just noticed that Ali Kaya is now only the third Turkish scorer and he's dropping back his 25th place in the early leaders. I think an intermediate team score could be really quite interesting here. So uh, you can see uh, the top two runners from a lot of the, the big nations. But um, you know, I'm really wondering where the third has got to is going to is really interesting to have an impact on that score. Well, it does chop and change around. Oh, that's interesting. Fischer just holding his side there. I'm just wondering whether he's got a little bit of stitch. But it's Aris Kaya still forging away at the front. Slight grimace from the tall Kenyan-born Turk. So interestingly, Marks has helped me on our computer. At the moment, it's giving Great Britain uh, and Belgium tied on 37 points from Turkey and then with Spanish in fourth there, despite losing, uh, seeing those two dropouts to the Spanish team, they're still holding on to fourth in the team competition at the moment. And indeed, it is the moment. So uh, we're giving unofficial standings, as you can see there, Great Britain, Northern Ireland and Belgium, both on 37 points. Turkey slipping back at this stage. Well, there's starting to be a... A slight growing of the gap between the leading two and back to Yamani Bahan Kripa. Kripa starting to lose a bit of contact. I think it's Aras Kaya who's really starting to surge at this stage. About just under two kilometers to go. Kaya now, quick look over his left shoulder to see where Fischer is. I think he might be quite surprised to see it's Fischer on his shoulder, perhaps not the likes of Kripa or Wanders or even his teammate Ali Kaya. But it's Aris Kaya now, the 2016 European champion, battling to regain his title. Didn't go to Tilburg 12 months ago, but he's back in contention here. So Aris Kaya now working hard. You can tell that he's really increased the pace now. He's trying to shape off Fischer. Uh, didn't have much of a track season, didn't go to Doha, he competed in the World Cross and finished way down in 26th place, which was perhaps a disappointing result for him, but he's back very much to his best form here in Lisbon. Robel Fischer having an outstanding run and still looking very, very competent and comfortable 
in second place as well. Fischer hardly ever had the lead. He's just tracked the leader, whether it's been Kaya or in the early stage of the races, the likes of Cripper or Wanders. But he's looking good, is Fischer at this stage. No, these guys are really, really going for it. And the gap they've opened up on Cripper, is, it, who's an accomplished cross country runner, is, is really, really impressive. And these guys, these guys are really pushing each other, and they've just left left everyone out, everyone else behind. And I mean, Fischer's not, he's not inserting himself, is he? He's just, he's just sticking there. And then I'd, I'd like to see, I'd like to see him have a tackle as we come into this last lap and uh, really test Kaya. And the Turkish flags for the first time today. Well, they had some disappointing results in the junior and under 23 competitions with the exception of Abdel Salem who took a medal in the under 20 men's under 20 championships but now the Turkish flags are out as we hear the bell so it's 1500 meters of running left and it's Aras Kara Turkey in first place at the moment followed very closely by Bobel Fischer of Sweden Yamani Bahan Kripper of Italy in third place at the moment and Andrew Butchart now up into fourth and looking full of running Julian Wanders perhaps just starting to look a little bit tired at this stage but it's still Aris Kair in front and he's really starting to really work very very hard I, I think he's decided that to have a long run from home not leaving it at all to the sprint nothing to choose as you can see there at least on the clock between Kair and Fischer Eight seconds back to Yamani Bahan Kripa. These are the men going through in about 15, 20th position. We just saw Philip Britson go through there. He's in 15th place. And I think that's the third Turk at the moment. Is Attack in 17th place. Carlos Mayo, former two-time under-23 medalist, finding the going a bit tougher in this senior race. Fernando Caro, well... Europe's fastest steeplechaser back in 19th at the moment. Perhaps is just building up his form for next year. He had a couple of reasonable runs in the Spanish cross country races, but nothing too spectacular. But this is actually very, very good running indeed from Aris Kaya. But I have to say, what a surprise and what a delight to see Robel Fischer up there. And now for the first time, really, he takes the lead. He's had a couple of moments at the front, but now Fischer really starting to try and run away from Kaya. And Kaya, for the first time, starting to look a little bit leaden. His legs starting to look very, very tired indeed. And there's this final uphill section on the course, and I wonder if Fisher's just giving him one final test. And, and he might have got an inkling in the last, with the previous laps whether he's better at running downhill. He might back himself. He might know, if I can get ahead of him, I can get away from him. And... That's what we might see now as we just come into the last couple of minutes of this race. Here we go, see Great Britain there. Uh, we're leading the team score uh, on that, you know, as we came into the bell. So it'll be interesting to see if that changes at all in the last in the last few minutes. Yes, partly thanks to Andrew Bouchard moving up. There's now a few points difference between themselves and the Belgians. The Belgians also have two men in the top ten at the moment, Bucici and Kimeli. But then they have to go right the way back into the 20s to find their third scorer, Lassen Bucici. But it's still Robel Fischer of Sweden, the real surprise package of this race. And he's just a few hundred metres away from the finish line. Well, Sweden, they've had success in the past in various other categories, but this would be the first ever Swedish man, senior man, to take gold medal. They've had... Men on the podium in the past, like Mustafa Mohamed. But this is the first Swede potentially taking a title in the senior men's race. So Robel Fischer starting to look as though he's really now the bit between his teeth. He's grimacing here, but working extremely hard as he's coming around the... coming into the home straight very shortly, round to the final bend. They've waited 20 three years for a gold medal in Sweden. That's Sarah Whitman in 1996. So now he just... That big downhill stretch brings him into the home straight. And he's working so hard, I think he could taste victory at this point. It's Robel Fischer, as we said before, having the race of his life. He wasn't amongst the five favourites that our host broadcaster who by and large have been so accurate in their choices have picked out he certainly wasn't one of my choices I don't think despite their 
experience it was one of the choices of either Mark or Hannah alongside me. So he's coming around now. And he's really put a big, big margin between himself and Aris Kaya. Looking around over his right shoulder, and he knows now victory. He's 100 metres away from the line, and it's going to be victory for Sweden after that gap of nearly three decades. Robel Fischer punches the air. Robel Fischer is the senior men's champion here in Lisbon. The 2019 Spa European Cross Country Championships winner. Aras Kaya comes home a very tired silver medalist. But it's Yamani Bahan Kripper coming through. He's just going to hold off Julian Wonders, who got a second wind and came through very strongly, picked up fourth place. That was, a, that was a big move through by Vanders on that last lap. He looked, he looked dead in the water and he yeah, really sort of made a big effort to come back there for that bronze. And Andy Butchart coming in for fifth. Samuel Fitway, silver last year as an under-23, sixth this year, followed home by Sofian Bucici of Belgium. And the runners now coming home thick and fast. Isaac Camelli moved up a few places for Belgium. Ben Connor, excellent. I think that's his best runner to European Cross Country Championships. Finished tenth in the past, now ninth here in Lisbon. Good run as well from the World Student Games 5,000 metres champion Jonas Rice from Switzerland. Antonio Abadia leading home the Spaniards in eleventh place, but not perhaps the day the Spaniards were expecting. Umay is dropping out. Aras Kaya, well, silver medal back in two thousand. This year, gold medal in 2016. Philip Ingebrigtsen coming through in 12th place. So the rest of these runners in that. Very entertaining. Didn't go to plan at all. Just seeing Ali Kaya come through, the 2015 champion. Looking very tired for the Turks. No, so it was a really great race. You see, still the, the effort these guys are putting in, and I always love to see someone like Philip Ingebrigtsen coming in the top ten. Then, when you know, he's, he's I don't know, if maybe I'm getting that wrong. He's quite the top ten, just outside, <laughs> just outside well. the top ten. But just putting in that that real massive effort over over a cross country like this, this is this is grueling. This is different than a 15 and a 5k on the track. Um, but it's nice to see him sort of attack and and, and respect every position. You see these guys, they are hammering it into the line, whether they're where they expect it to finish or whether they're, they're off it for the, the pride of running for their country. And you see what that, that brings out um, of all these athletes on this course today, just, just burying themselves to get to that line. Well, you can tell how tough this was. This was 10,225 metres, but it was 29.59. So you can also, by comparison, see how good some of those early results, in particular Moller, was as we watch the highlights of this senior men's race unfold. So if we're to believe the, uh, the commentary at the course, it's, it's giving uh, Great Britain coming home with the team, team championship, Belgium with second and Spain with third, but we'll have to confirm that once we get some more results in. Great dominant run, uh, win by Fisher there. You can see how much that means to him, and you know he would have been targeting this for, for months, and uh, it must be incredibly satisfying to, to pull off a win like that against an incredibly strong field. Well, Sweden, as you were saying, going back a few years, they've had other medals, but it's gold for Robel Fischer, 29.59. So half an hour's hard running put 11 seconds between himself and Aris Kaya. That probably translates to about 60, 70 metres on this sort of course with Yamani Bahan Kripa finishing third for Italy. As we run down there, the defending champion, Philip Ingebrigtsen, wasn't to be his day, finishing almost a minute behind the winner in 12th place. But just look at that. I mean, there's a minute between the first place and 13th place and some very well-known names further down the field fernando caro made up a few places towards the end of the race but caro europe's top steeplechaser finishing 20th I mentioned it a few times before but you can find 
all the results right the way down on the European Athletics website, www.european-athletics.org. Well, Robel Fischer, that's the big shock of the day, I think. And the yellow vest of Sweden, which has been worn by so many great distance runners in their time, comes through. And it's been a long time, as Mark was saying, since the last time we heard a Swedish national anthem at these championships. Yeah, we've got yeah, confirmation of the team results here on the screen now with uh, Great Britain and Northern Ireland getting a narrow victory over Belgium. As we keep saying, all these all these positions count all the way to the line, just a two-second victory. Spain coming 45th, but as you say, Mark, um, Turkey just slipping out the medals there with uh, Ali Kaya, um, yeah, perhaps perhaps in pace, you know, went for glory. Well, he wanted to finish up high and he just, just fell short. It's a pity because attack ran brilliantly. Yeah, that's no, a shame, and you know, that's the that's the delicacy of a team team performance. You have one of your one of your members outperforming 